Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of It's a Sure Thing, the conscious collective community platform where we have guest speakers from all over the world share their stories and their passion and how they are making a difference in the world by being their authentic selves. So tonight um, we've got an amazing man who I haven't seen for oh, quite a number of years. It was 15 years ago actually when I had a reading with him. He is an international psychic medium. He has travelled the world um, and does lot uh, has also in the past done lots of events and mediumship shows and meditations and lots of different things. He's come over to Adelaide to do the, to do those things where is which is where I met him and he's originally from the UK from Staffordshire and he is now in Noosa in Queensland living his best life and it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show this evening if you're calling from or watching from Australia Clive Whitby hello Clive how are you hello Sue it's been a long time it has been a long time and it's an absolute pleasure to have you here um, and to to see that you're doing really well and you've just celebrated a, an amazing milestone birthday that's and, true yes and, yeah um, and you still look the same as you did 15 years ago if only you're only charming me now sue <laughs> <laughs> oh dear so clive now let us know when did you when did you arrive in australia what made you come to australia 1991 i arrived on the day of the first iraq war Oh, okay. I took off from Heathrow and the, the airport was surrounded by um, army personnel. I remember it vividly. Uh, I came over for the offer of two jobs. I, I, I was a teacher in my previous life and uh, I got experience and qualifications that Australia needed at the time. So I came over in a, in a very quick way because Australia needed me. So I got a visa within three months. Uh, so I had interviews in May. Uh, I was here in, I was got my visa by August and I was here by Christmas. So January 91 was the time I dropped into Sydney and uh, it was 40 degrees. So I left at minus seven and it was sleeting. And I got into Sydney and it was 40 degrees and it stayed 40 degrees for a few days. Well, a few weeks, in fact. So uh, that was my first impression of Australia. And uh, I have a first cousin here. So they, she lives in Sydney. So they were able to meet me at the airport, even though I'd never met them before. So I came completely uh, without knowing anything or with anybody. So it was a surprise when I arrived in Sydney. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I taught then for about two years in a special school in Liverpool in Sydney, which is probably the hottest place in that part of the world. And uh, it took me two years to just get through the shock of the heat and the climate and the people, but I uh, found my way through that and eventually got out of teaching and uh, started my own business in a in a shop in Foster, Tom Curry, in New South Wales. Anybody coming from Foster or New South Wales, put their hand up, because uh, I may have met you, because it was such a small town. Um, <laughs> everybody knew everybody. Um, so I had a shop which was like an alternative lifestyle store, and uh, that led me into, uh, let's say, more full-time psychic work, and I was also a clinical hypnotherapist, at the time so I was I started off very slowly um, but the shop grew very fast because there was a great need in that part of the world and over the next nine years um, it got exhausting because it became 24-7 uh, not only dealing with the customers in the shop but also seeing all the clients and all the people that wanted readings and hypnosis so I was really busy and started to acquire people from all over uh, all over Australia. They came to Foster just to see me, which was a surprise. Uh, but then I remember one day a lady came in from Denmark and she said, I've come all the way from Denmark to see you. I heard about you. And uh, she heard about me when she visited New York 
uh, this is a this is a true story. She went to New York, and uh, she met somebody in New York that obviously I'd spoken to two years before. And she said, "Oh, yeah, go and see Clive in Australia." Yes, okay, I'll catch the plane. So she, <laughs> she went back home to Denmark, and then she told me the story of how she got to um, to see me. And uh, we've stayed in client touch ever since, off and on. So I speak to her maybe every three years now over Skype or uh, Zoom now, which is what we use. And uh, what else did I say? Yeah, the shop went from strength to strength. And then, of course, the landlords wanted to increase the rent, but also not give us another lease. So yeah. that was the time to come to Newsome. Cool. So we, we had to close the shop, unfortunately, but we st I still had my skills and I was doing meditation uh, sessions twice a week uh, with groups of six to eight people. And I was also visiting Sydney and Melbourne and uh, what's the other place? Brisbane, yes, just up the road. Uh, and did a few mind, body, spirit festivals, which became a source of advertising. And I met a lot of people. And yeah. I also went to Adelaide uh, two or three times, which is where I met you. And it is. That's right. And I think you were a student of mine at one point. And uh, weren't you? You were. Did you student with me? Uh, to do some training. Something. So yeah. Uh... I remember you in the class giving me heaps of questions. <laughs> I think it was it was a couple of meditations she did at Rosalind's at Nurturing Humanity. Ah, there was, there was right. some meditation groups with with Sam and a, a few other people. Yeah, um, yeah, and I was really really inquisitive because I I'd not really meditated before. Well, so, it was good to see. It's good to see how far you've come since then, and how far I've come, of course. But yeah. it's good to see because I'm still in touch with a few people from Adelaide, and. Mm. Uh, they all they all seem to have continued their development i mean sam is obviously she's gone on to doing other things and you've gone on to building your business and doing what you're doing now which is a great thing to uh for the community as well as for all our people so to speak our tribe and our tribe, uh, yeah. our tribe and uh, our tribe has stuck together strangely enough through thick and thin, and even though it's been 15 years since I last saw you, um, you were, what, were you pregnant then? Or were I'd you just, just about... I think I've just had Nathan, I just had my baby, yeah. yeah she, uh, so all the viewers, uh, it had nothing to do with me, but Sue had uh, a baby at the time, and uh, that was 15 years ago, and now he's 15 years old? <laughs> there you go that's psychic psychic at its best <laughs> oh dear no you and, and back in the day back then you actually had a tape recorder and i've got a tape i've got the tape of you on the tape recorder anyway yeah. um but no it it was it was really really fascinating to have that reading with you and you also did a few workshops over here that rosalind ran at the glenelg north community center which i'm now running meditations at funnily yeah. enough but anyway Brilliant. yeah so it's so, great to see how far you've come sue so you you've you. developed yourself along the way and of course if it's if your development has been like my development then it's been uh, you just go from one day to the next and the week next and then then the year and then something else and then something else happens and then you point it in a different direction and another direction comes up so that's basically how i've uh, lived my life is just followed uh, the feeling or followed i would say a, a spiritual pathway even though i wasn't completely aware of my spiritual pathway when i first started this work in 1987 i just fell into it by it was a bit like mistakes but i'd already started because i'd already when i look back i'd already started to see my father who had passed 10 years previously come into my living room almost every night and say this or say that and he spoke to me more when he was dead than he was when he was alive. It was a quiet man. <laughs> it's true. This is a true story. I, I used to see him, and, and at that point in time, I never used to say anything to anybody. I just thought that everybody could do this. Everybody could see their 
um, deceased relatives, so to speak. And, uh, and I just got on with it. And then I understood exactly what he was talking about because I didn't really know what he was planning for me because the plan there was a plan in place and I was just going well, all right I'll do that and I'll do this and I'll see what happens and and then all of a sudden I realized what it was all about so there was a huge change in my life in 87 and I understood exactly what he had been talking to me about all that time I mean we weren't talking like you and I at this moment in time and when I say I saw him I saw an image in my third eye or wherever you want to say, but he definitely came through as a spiritual being, which really, um, as I said, we our relationship wasn't that great when he was alive, so but it became much more distinct when he was when he was gone. And it's been the same with uh, my other uh, relative. What's her name? Mother. My mum, yes. She passed also in just after I came back to, just after I came to Australia, a year after I came here. So she she left and my relationship with her became really good after I'd got into this work, even though I tried to explain to her what I was doing. Uh, whenever she met a friend in the street, said, well, this is Clive, my son, he does this for a living. And she said, well, it's this, that, and the other. And I'm going, no, it's not, nothing like that. I've explained it to you so many times. I mean, some of your viewers will understand this, that yeah. those that are closest to you uh, will find it difficult to completely understand what you're into because it's not like an engineer of a bridge or it's not like a manufacturer of cars. This is uh, work that is done in a different place, in a different energy, in a different setting altogether that even myself and even you we don't really know what it's all about and we just know there's something there and and of course when when the student is ready then the teacher comes along and I found a good teacher at at that time to take me forwards because after I um, had that impression so many times I then went and sought um, a medium out for myself even though I knew nothing about what they did or how they did it and I really didn't and when I look back, I only lived five miles up the road from one of the biggest spiritualist churches in the country, in the UK, and I never went. Uh, but I did go later. But it was, it was, uh, it's a bit like sometimes being led by the nose, really. Come on, Clive, you've got to just go this way, go this way. So it's following your intuition, really, and trusting it. Yeah. And trusting that spirit is on your side and they're not going to throw you over a cliff just yet but when the time comes of course they might lead you to a place where you will make a mistake and of course you learn a lot more from your mistakes than you do from the easy passing of of life so uh the, where are we going to now sue yeah no 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 that's all that's all great that was a really comprehensive um uh, Bit of background i didn't know all of those things uh, about you actually so that was that was really enlightening that's um, one thing that's one thing uh, i find sometimes that nobody knows nobody asks you about yourself about yes. who you are and i think this part of the difficulty of this work is it separates you out from yourself and people yes. don't they either want to get something from you or they want to go ah he's one of those and run like hell and so you have this dichotomy really of, well, I just want to be treated as a human being as I was before 1987 or before I started doing this work. Sometimes it's nice just to have that reality check with yourself and say, well, I used to, I used to play a lot of music and I used to do a lot of this and all of that. And, and I've been on the radio, but when I went on the radio in the radio station, I, I kept myself to myself. I didn't want to do readings on the, it's just not the place to give yeah people messages about their dead relatives or you know their baby boy that's just died or whatever but this is a it's a place where I just wanted to enjoy myself and just be myself so I used to just go and play music until somebody came into the studio and said oh, I know who you are uh, you're that man who was reading so uh, and after that everything changed and all the people either ran for cover or they got there was one or two that got close so I have one or two good friends and the other 35,000 people have gone, ah, no, it's not quite like that. But it's yeah. that sort of dichotomy as to who, who am I? Who, you, yes. lose, you can lose yourself in, in, what you, in who you become. Yes. And if you let it 
just completely overtake you, then right at the beginning of my uh, journey, so to speak, I did remember, I do remember a story about a, a lady that just went from one place to another and she went into Boots the Chemist. Uh, uh, for those who come from the UK, there's Boots the Chemist, which is a bit like, uh, I don't know. Um, Price is back. Price is right. I mean, it's a big place, it's a, it's a big concern. And she went in there and started to talk to all the customers and all the, on, on all the, the representatives about their dead people or their dad or their mother. And, and basically, they, carted her, they did take her away and put her in an ambulance and took her oh, to God. And she went into a psychiatric hospital after that. So that was the, that's the extreme, of course. Okay, so we're yeah. not, you're not going to end up in a psychiatric hospital. No, but it's it's interesting how times have changed, Clive. Um, and I think recently, especially with what's been going on over the last two years, you know, worldwide, we, yep. we know what's been going on. And I, I don't know whether you feel the same, but I feel there's been a massive shift of people really focusing on what they want, what they're prepared to have anymore in their life, what's important to them. And there's a lot more people really searching for something more than just that egocentric stuff now um and and calling in spirit if you like connecting more so did have you felt the same way like there's a, a lot more respect if you like um for people who who are doing this work because before it was like either shunned or you were crazy or you were taken away in an ambulance in a straitjacket but now people are realizing actually there's something to it i mean there's been lots of us that have known that for many years, but yeah. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, we've been, the, we've been the ones on the outside trying to get the people on the inside just to listen to us. And that's part of the process is getting people to listen to us, not just whether we want tea or coffee, but whether there's something a little bit deeper here that you need to consider. And that's what I was talking about earlier on, about understanding me or understanding you at a deeper yeah. level, that you're just not Sue. And you just not do this. You you're doing a lot more energetically speaking, which is connecting people, which is connecting with a tribe. We keep coming back to that word tribe, don't we? And yes. so that's that's the, been the process for the last couple of years, especially. I mean, for me, uh, has been a connection with a whole new tribe of people, which mm -hmm. are uh, really on the same page as me, and also uh, we've followed direction more of our intuition rather than what we've been listening to because if you listen to this stuff then it just gives you brain damage but if you start to listen to what's going inside the feelings that come up to the surface then they go ah, oh, yeah this is the way forwards we just need to do this and we just need to do that and yes uh, I've found myself and uh, going back to basics just basically stripping away and that's what it's been it's a bit like stripping away everything that you no longer need in your life but what you do want in your life is a sense of belief at this time and we all need to believe in something and of course over the last 50 years then religion in its old self has disappeared people don't go to church very often they don't uh, look at they don't talk about god or the bible or the this that uh, but yes, there's been a strong push towards spirituality. And of mm -hmm. course, there's been a strong push towards the work that I do, which is developing uh, people in their own spiritual way, but also getting them to understand that life doesn't end when you're dead. Uh, yes. There is a life afterwards and we're not supposed to be afraid and we're not afraid. We're not, I'm not scared. That's, also a, a real revelation for a lot of people that they're not scared about dying now they just want to they're just happy just to get away from the fear that's yeah. been spread around us like peanut butter on a piece of toast which i used to like but i don't eat peanut butter anymore because it's too <laughs> it doesn't go, it doesn't go with the half marathon stuff uh, no. but but it's nice you know it's nice but you don't use it anymore. You don't. And so I found myself doing gardening. I've been digging up the garden and planting things. And I've got spinach out the back and I've got shallots and I've got tomatoes that grow self-setting tomatoes everywhere. And, and it's crazy. Uh, but it's been a real pleasure to actually develop a garden, which is really developing yourself because you get back to that nature. You get back to getting your hands in the earth. And 
that's okay. where the energy comes out of actually because that's where we walk we walk on the earth so we get we get grounded and we don't have to spend all our time up here uh, going to psychiatric hospitals so to speak you, it's time to get back and of course uh alina and i have been spending a lot of time running in the national parks and just under trees going to see waterfalls and just getting out into Carnarvon Gorge. You know, if you ever come to Queensland, go to Carnarvon Gorge, which is a magnificent place. And But, you know, you've probably got all that stuff in South Australia anyway. I mean, you've got mines in South Australia. So uh, we've, got, we've got rocks and caverns and caves. Of course, <laughs> we've got, of course we've got mines. There's all sorts of mines here. But, uh, but there's a lot of people here now starting to grasp, let's say, the energy that's starting mm. to be created by people like yourself and people like me that go out into the community and just okay have a chat have a walk have a laugh just bring a sense of humor bring some positivity back into life because the day after this um, crisis so to speak was created i recognize that the joy it's like a balloon that had been punctured and the balloon, of course, when you have balloons, they're supposed to bring joy and happiness. And when I noticed the day, it was like two days after or a day, a day or two after, the joy had just left the planet. People had stopped laughing. They're just going, oh, this is going to be terrible. But yeah. we're still here. You know, we're still uh, talking. We're still communicating. And really, at the end of the day, that's what my job is, to communicate and connect with those energies that are, floating around so to speak but also connect with the energy of the people so you get a, a deeper understanding of of what they're going through i mean only the other day i had a father here whose whose son had died in his arms he was only 12 years old and he, he only a week before he, he he was talking about his his son dying in his arms uh i won't say the reason why but you may be able to gather why uh, that it was after a medical intervention that he had, and within two hours he'd gone, and that's how it was. That's how it came through. And the little boy came through. Really, he, he didn't know where the hell he was was really. So they can get a bit caught up in in not uh, expecting to go. So yeah. they need yes. to be rescued. So I, I I know that you do a bit of rescue work on the side, and and I know there are others around you that do. Uh, some sort of rescue work but that's also part of my job is to try and get get the spirit out of the the place where they don't need to be because they don't want to die they don't want to be there and they they still feel as if they're here so it's uh, again it's that dichotomy am I dead or am I alive I, I didn't want to die I don't want to die I'm too early and uh, it's it's a tragic and my life since I suppose you could call it 1991 um, has been dealing with people's um, grief. Yeah. But also, on the other hand, my work has also developed into meeting a lot of lawyers. Uh, I don't know whether you ever come across a lot of lawyers, but... Uh, I used to work for a lawyer firm. <laughs> there you go. Um, so you know all about lawyers. Um, but yep. Whenever I go to whenever I go to Hong Kong, which is I haven't been to Hong Kong, and I'm not sure whether I'll be able to get back there yet. Um, but whenever I go to Hong Kong, I always seem to attract all the lawyers and all the judges, uh, and this is all confidential, so it's just between you and me and all the people <laughs> that I see on the right hand side that I connect with a lot of lawyers uh, because lawyers have a job to do and they have to do they have to lie. Uh, it, it, that's that's one of the qualifications of a lawyer i found look not every lawyer lies but they have oh. to lie and well i'm glad i don't work there anymore so continue <laughs> <laughs> yeah but this is this is just my research this is just working with people and yes. working these are real people but they come as a lawyer so they come with a badge on yes i'm mr yes. and i'm mr i'm the supreme court judge and I mean, it, it's incredible how many lawyers that need a psychic to give them permission or to give them 
let's say reassurance or but you see that's their humanity and that's what's happened in the last couple of years is that people have started to connect with their humanity which is who they are and they're a bit scared of who they are because they've always had this role of being a lawyer or a judge or whoever whatever label yeah. whatever labeled and this last two years because they've spent a bit of time on their own or you know walking the dog until it sort of gets legless but the, the it's just that they start to connect with themselves again mm, and yes. they, they come to me for reassurance to say is that all right is it okay for me to feel this way or to think this way or to kind of and I don't want to do lawyer anymore. I want to be a. I want to go and do a gardener. I want to go and take trips up Fraser Island in a four wheel drive. I want to do something totally different. Even yeah. though I'm earning thousands and thousands of dollars every week or every month, they realise that that is not. That's not giving them that feeling of joy or feeling of happiness or a feeling of fun. Call it what you like, um, because we all look for jobs that are. Well, we all look for jobs in the beginning, I don't know, just to satisfy our parents, I suppose. When I look back on my life, I went into, I went into the bank. I was a banker for two years, and I went, oh, I don't want to do this for two years, so I left. You know, and yeah. they were horrified because I'd got a nice, secure job that was going to, you know, I would be head of Barclays Bank by now. Well, I'd probably be retired on a huge pension, and, of course, uh, that didn't happen. Uh, so I went and I followed... I followed what was right for me. I followed my humanity right back in the 1970s. Yeah, you then, were the trailblazer, a trailblazer walking on your, a lonely path, a I lonely path. But I it's not to, lonely anymore. I started to feel, I started to follow my intuition right back in the 1960s, 1970s when things were a bit strange, but, you know, they're a lot stranger now. But if you follow your intuition, if you trust yourself at this time, then things aren't quite as strange as they might appear. Uh, they might look crazy on the outside, but on the inside, people are starting to get together. People are starting to form groups and tribes and those uh, communities that are going to work together to create a better life and a better lifestyle for us all, really. Yeah. It's whether we are able to get through it with all the, uh, stuff that comes bombarding at us and well you can't do this and you can't do that well you know i'm thinking about buying my own plane you know just to get out of the uh but it, it'll have to travel so many thousands of miles before it can stop but anyway uh the fuel bill will be enormous but I, <laughs> when when all this started i said i said two years ago i said oh, will i ever see my children again and that's really, that was my biggest concern is whether I, my children are 45, by the way, and 41, but I've got three grandchildren now. So it's been a, a struggle, but it, it yeah. has been that sort of, uh, I could have just gone and got everything and got on the plane and done what I complied to it all, but I've never been one to fit in. That's the other thing. I've never been one to fit in that, yeah. And that's that you see, that's where our connection is. Our connection is on a much deeper level, yeah. Than yeah. hello, Sue, how are you? I didn't see you for 15 years, but our connection, even 15 years ago, was at a different level. We never Absolutely. even we never knew it, but it was yeah. there that we were always a bit rebellious or were always able to step outside of that norm, so to speak. And at the end of the day, we were only human. And of course, that tribe that we had around Rosalind's uh, place, uh, all those people, and then going to that center, uh, there's probably about 20 or 30 people that turned up one night, I remember. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they were all of the same ilk. I don't know whether they're all still here, but you know, you might connect with them from time to yes. time and say, oh, yes, I remember you in 1995. Oh, yeah, that was when Clive did that talk, didn't he? Yeah, but now you see. Now I'm into not only personal readings, I'm also doing churches. So that's another development in the last few years. I've always had that connection with churches. I've done churches in London, and I did the, what they call the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain one night. I just walked in there, and it was volunteer night, and you could do voluntary in, in, in one of the, you know, the biggest spiritual uh, 
places in the you could say in the world everybody wants to go there and i just went oh i'll just do it let me just have a and i had to pay five pounds i think and uh just to sh get them to shut up no they'd let me in and i gave them five quid and they let me stand up and i did the first read and i went ah this is all right and i just asked this guy whether i could do another one he said yeah go on carry on and so i carried on for another 25 minutes doing a set with connecting with people in the audience and and yeah. since i've been in Queensland for the last two years, and I've done a lot of churches. I, I just, I can do, I, I do church meetings. And of course, that's also a sad place when some of them are all, uh, can't see their faces and they can't, they, they have to wear a hat. I don't know. Anyway, it's, it's ridiculous that religion, whatever religion is left, <laughs> yeah. I'm only teasing. But, I know. but it's just that it's when you, when I asked the audience, and there was an audience of 28 people. I remember one night it was in a little place called Karoi. And uh, we'll keep this between ourselves because this is confidential. And I asked the audience, I said, um, how many of you actually uh, uh, know anybody that's died of, uh, of the C word? And nobody I didn't. I've had a bit of a cough. I've had a bit of a cold. But, and then I said, how many of you have actually had any experience of suicide in the last two years? And this was like six months ago, so this would be over the last 18 months. Yeah. And, of course, 12 out of the 28 put their hands up. And these were close relatives and friends. And, 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 I, and I, I felt so, it felt so bad, really, that there were these people sitting in the audience and they were already sitting six feet apart. And so they couldn't touch each other and they couldn't hold each other. They couldn't hold each other's hands and they were talking or they were thinking about their son or their daughter or their mother or their father that had uh, done you know committed suicide it sounds a little bit sort of sorry everybody i'm sort of bringing the energy back down again but this is it's a, it's a problem it's a this problem. is the reality and this is humanity going through the process of of trying to decide whether to stay alive or not i mean it comes down to those very very small tiny issues but obviously taking your own life is not a tiny issue but the last couple of years has shown people connecting with themselves and say i don't want to be here anymore i don't want to do this anymore this is yeah. this is crazy and yeah. of course that's but that's their choice and i would say well suicide well if that's the choice then they go, they'll still go to the place where they need to go to but you know after this last two years i want to go I want to spend a couple of days in hell. It'll be good. And singing and dancing. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Clive, we're, we're nearly at the end. Well, we are. We're over, we're over time already. Um, over time? Um, over time. And I haven't even acknowledged anybody yet, but that's that's okay because it's been really interesting. But I will just quickly say hello, Michelle Gray, because she's come on and said hi. Adez also said sounds like Coochie with the, with the people knowing each other. Sadie has said she loves Boots, the chemist. Sadie's from the UK, obviously. Um, she's been strapped upon Avon. Yep, and she's very okay. Who else have we got? Michelle has said connecting with the true essence of universal energy within ourselves. Um, and Nicole Haley, I think she's actually asked a question. Hi, both beautiful people. I'm awaking at the moment and I'm having a great and weird having great and weird things happening. Is it my health or is it spiritual connection? Uh, we, we actually can't answer any any of those <laughs> any, at the moment. But if you want to know, Nicole, get in touch with Clive direct because he is doing Zoom readings and he's also on the Enlightened Tribe Global Wellness Directory, which is at sueshore.com.au. So you can get that in the link below. Michelle Miller has also said thanks, Clive and Sue. Michelle, you may not, you, you might, might remember, it came to a few things that you put on, Clive, as well. Um, so yeah, if if anybody wants to see you, uh, they can do that online, and they can connect with you through your facebook page and for anyone wanting to watch the replay it's also going to be on the uh, my blog page on my website they can also come and see me by the way yeah in person in, in noosa person. yeah it's not always easy to get to noosa but i think the borders are open now and i think that the sky is getting bluer it is it is so Thank you so much for your time. 
<laughs> and the airplane's coming as well, isn't it? It will be on its way. It's an F-45 uh, oh. it's, and it's got its own missiles. <laughs> <laughs> Targeting anyone in particular? That's a whole nother conversation for another day, I think. Oh, yes, we can have that conversation another time. <laughs> oh, so thank you so much, Clive. It's been great listening to you and connecting with you again. I want to watch this all over again and, and listen to it all. It's um, There was a lot to take in and it's great to hear your story and to share your wisdom. So thank you very much for being with us and thank you everyone for listening in. Thank so you. We'll, yeah, thank you. Happy. Cool.